first question would be, have you guys seen the Hogwarts Express at the WB Studio Tour? If so, what do you think? I haven't seen it. No. We're going to go tonight. Uh, today, straight after her, yeah. me and George and Anna are going yeah, to the studios, but I've not even been to Yeah, no, I haven't. At all. No. Amazing. Yeah. What, you, what else are you excited to see? Yeah, Everything. Yeah. The, there's the ca- there's the like a huge... Box. The wand box. Yeah. Everyone tweets us where our wand boxes are. Mm. But it's like, you know, just a thing Harry. for us to see. Yeah. Well, Apparently the heart that I did on the chain is there. <gasps> oh, oh, is it? Oh, it? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Look at it. it. So I want to go and see mm-hmm. that. Yeah. Um, I was wondering, because as you were sort of filming while the books were still coming out, did you have any favourite theories or predictions for the last books? Oh. Anything that you were hoping that might happen that didn't end up happening? I was hoping I that Ron would fall back in love with Lavender <laughs> and yeah. leave Hermione. Um, and then me and Hermione would have like a really like, like aggressive fight. Yeah, um, you see that. Yeah, I and then me and Hermione that. would become best friends. Yeah, mm, um, that, that did happen. happen. <laughs> 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 I was just sad when Dobby died. I didn't want Dobby to die. Yeah. Like, why kill, why kill Dobby? Unnecessary. <laughs> what, <thank> unnecessary. Just <laughs> so unnecessary. It was like Game of Thrones does. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, no. I think it was done really well the way that J.K. Rowling did it, so there's no other, I don't know, additions. Yeah. yeah. I don't think there's enough time either because like, I found that as the book came out we were filming, filming yeah. and then Back-to-back. so it was, it was a bit, it was all very immersed. <coughs> and Harry Potter, both the books and the films, have left quite a legacy both culturally and for you guys as individuals, so do you have any examples of how that's worked for you, you know, as what it's left you with, as well as what other people have said it's left them with? Um, I think just as a as a, a life experience to be a part of something so huge is, you know, I think we're all um, you know incredibly grateful that we all got a chance to be a part of it, and you know, real we British. Be here right now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we wouldn't be here right now if it wasn't for it. Um, yeah, so. I just had a, a baby, and it's kind of made me much more aware of children's books and stuff. Mm-hmm. Even though he's way too young to know what a book is, but <laughs> um, I, it's made me see more families and, and the books they read and think about the choices that they're making. And I'm just so glad that Harry Potter exists because mm. it's such a great. It's, it, it's something that can be for lots of different ages, and it's such a family thing to, like I've seen like I've heard about parents who read their their kids Harry Potter and I just can see that happening for me and like I just I I'm so glad that I have an attachment to it because I know I would read it eventually to him anyway so it's quite I feel quite that's quite a nice thing to have been to be able to say to him eventually yeah I think I still every so often will be read the books because they're they're so not easy. That, that's the wrong word to say. Easy to read, but they're so easy to slip back into that world. Um, and so I think it's kind of crazy to think when you're reading it and you're like, I remember when we filmed that. That's yeah. such a weird <laughs> kind of thing to think about. That didn't answer your question at all. But <laughs> yeah, anyway, um, let me think. I mean, I love Harry Potter, but like you, I. I Every year I kind of go and watch them, always at Christmas for some reason. Yeah. Um, I have to watch back one. To back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Mulled wine yeah. and some Harry Potter. Um, but I think I'm, I'm just really happy that to be part of something like that because I've got a friend called Johnny Beery who's like, I don't oh, know, I she's amazing. <laughs> and she, you know, I realised how powerful these books are because she was uh, like ill in hospital and she had to get, she's a singer and she was thought she might not be able to sing ever again. And she had to be silent for like three weeks while they operated on her and she read all these books and that, <laughs> got her through that and it's like that's amazing this book has this power that just continually mm. gives people happiness mm. yeah. you know in whatever state they're in mm. there was an interesting article a uh, letter in the guardian yesterday about somebody uh, in france whose mother had been diagnosed with multiple sclerosis yeah. yeah who effectively found the books as therapy mm. because growing up he was pushed from parent to you know mm. relative to relative um so i uh, do you hear any other stories from fans along those? It's a lot more than just a book, it seems. You know, it's people's people's have devoted their lives to Harry yeah. Potter. You know, uh, when we would go out to Florida, we s- well, for me anyway, I'm sure all around the world, the first time I see people who have really, uh, what's the word? I don't even know the word. Like, they're, 
not obsessed, but it's, it's their life, you know, and it's it clearly touches people in different ways and, and affects people in different ways. But I did a convention a couple of weeks ago in Cardiff, and um, it was so amazing the difference in why people were drawn to the books. Yeah. Like there were a couple of girls who would come on a two-hour train ride to get there at the crack of dawn, and they'd moved on to this obsession to Harry Potter from Buffy. And it was like, <laughs> and you could tell that Harry Potter was one of their fleeting, they were gonna go on to something else after, but at the, this phase in their lives, Harry Potter was their everything. Mm -hmm. And this, they, that gave them the drive to get up at the crack of dawn and get to this convention early. And, mm -hmm. and then there was another guy who was carrying around his oxygen tank, kind of was clearly mm -hmm. very sick, but was there because he loved mm -hmm. the people <coughs> here so much and he needed to see them. And, it was nothing to him, the fact that he had to carry around an oxygen tank. It was nothing to him that he got there really early. He just wanted to be there. And then there was a whole family of, of a mother of five kids, and they were all dressed up as Harry Potter characters. Mm -hmm. And the, there was, like, the youngest was about 18 months, and the oldest kid was about 11, and the family was there to be <laughs> a Harry Potter family. Yeah. Yeah. And so, like, the complete contrast in why, in, in these fans, but they all, Harry Potter was this thing that joined them all together. It was just really beautiful. Mm -hmm. I recently watched on YouTube the um, commencement speech that J.K. Rowling gives at um, Harvard. And it kind of reminded me that at the core of the books, I guess, is just that simple idea that just be kind to people and mm. good will prevail over evil. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. it's true, and it's such a nice message because it's so simple and that's all you really need to tell your children mm. is just be kind to other people. And it's kind of, that's basically at the core of the books, mm. I think. I like the theme that deals with, um, as a kid's book, it deals with death and loss. Oh. Yeah. I think that's massively important mm. because, you know, some people get a pet. Um, <laughs> and so that's a way of teaching children, you know, things don't last forever, things do die, this happens. How do you deal with loss? That's the next step. And yeah. I think that's massively important for kids to know. Mm. And I expect to ask as well, um, which Hogwarts house do you think you would be in? If you had to get sorted, um, I, I, I said the badger before, but I don't know what it's called. <laughs> right. Yeah, what, what, it, what, what, why would you go in Hufflepuff? <laughs> like, I know Isn't it Jake and Rowling's favourite house? Yeah, it is. It is? Okay, that one. <laughs> no, but you said the badger. Oh, Isn't that Ravenclaw? No, you said yeah. Ravenclaw. I thought it was Ravenclaw. Oh, I thought so it was which Hufflepuff. one's Ravenclaw? Well, like, Ravenclaw's an eagle. eagle. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So, it's, so, yeah. I don't but know why you that bird symbol. Yeah, yeah. That's it's Hufflepuff. Like, the people that go into badger, what is that? Hufflepuff. Yeah, yeah, but what? Loyal. Loyal. Yeah. Done. I think that I would be Gryffindor, but then the second I got into boys, I'd be Slytherin. Yeah. <laughs> 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 I'd want a Slytherin <coughs> at night, and I want to. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, so what, that leads to the question: What are the? Just seem sexy. Whereas Gryffindor's just like they're the loyal, they're the nice guy. They're boring. You want a no. Slytherin? Gryffindor in the streets. Yeah. Slytherin in the sheep. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah. We were just talking with two, two, of the guy, two of the Death Eaters, Nick, Nick Moran and uh, John, about why is it that the dark guys are cooler? Yeah. Oh, they just are. They just are. They're just you sexier. just don't want somebody who's just available to you. Yeah, <laughs> yeah totally get what you You want them to not text you back. And I don't think Slytherins so would text you back. Never. They, they, no, they, never they would back. leave you waiting. No owls. Yeah. No owls. Well, no, see, I'm not a fan of the three day rule. That. that <laughs> the Gryffindor all the way. I just agree with you. You'd want a Gryffindor eventually. I'd want a Gryffindor. The question was what yeah, we want to be in, not what we got. Rugby, I'm going to be. Yeah, Gryffindor. Yeah, Gryffindor. One last sneaky question. Did you take anything away from the sets with you? Well, we just found out earlier yeah. that Anna stole <laughs> oh, some <okay>. cements. <laughs> Still got those the bad big boys. Steel. A box of cements. <laughs> the blue ones. <laughs> yeah. I think also you day. might have stolen food. Um, lots of that. My mum, when she came, <laughs> when she came food, to visit, yeah, she, she took, <laughs> she yeah, took food. Well. Yeah, yeah, my dad did. Food was yeah. everywhere. So I we literally so go food. home. Yeah. Yeah. I, I was really, really like... But well, we dinner. were told that everything was going to be Free. archived yeah, and that everything. cars were going to be checked as you left the <laughs> studio. Really? Yeah, they were checking. Like, and it's so I know that like, if ones weren't returned, you know, everyone had to. And there was a guy I mean, stood we were always really good. Yeah. But like, if if we ones were missing or whatever, you know, it, they had to be found before people left. Um, I really wanted my tie from from the battle, um, and also because it you I took kind of tie. I it felt like because when you leave school, <laughs> that's the one thing you do keep is your tie. I um, don't know. But yeah, I didn't. I, I, I was too scared to attempt. <laughs> to I took my jewelry. Yeah. Yeah, I took yeah. my jewelry. 
because I, mean, I had like a little pea necklace that I took and an, my earrings and my ring. The great thing is though, at now like you can, I've got a Gryffindor cardigan because I I got one in Florida when we yeah, went to Florida. Yeah, me too. And the scarf. Like, you can buy all the stuff. And the scarf. Like my character wore a ring. I got an accessorized. Yeah. So <laughs> you can kind of buy it. You can all. buy it all now, but like obviously it means more yeah. taking it from yeah. you. Yeah. So what what are you guys up to now? I have a Do book of illustrations coming out in July, which I'm that's being published in July, so I'm kind of gearing up to that. And I'm doing my stand up in Edinburgh Festival this summer. And what's that called? I loved her. Um, it's a show. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's it's comedy. It's stand up. So, right. yeah. So, are you, do you have a script where you can make up? Yeah, it's a script. Yeah, oh, it's a script. Okay. It's a lot about um, exes and texting and being erotic with okay. men. And <laughs> it's basically about my obsession with my boyfriend's exes. Which <laughs> <laughs> is healthy. So um, it's a healthy show, a healthy, sane show. <laughs> um, I've got a band. Uh, I've got a band called Molotov Jukebox, and I'm currently recording our next EP called Tropical Gypsy. So we've just come back from a tour of Mexico, which was awesome. Did you just um, flew in from LA. Uh, yeah, LA, but that was to see my, my uh, wife, Una, my best friend. Um, <laughs> but I, I'm planning kind of going back in November because I'm born on Day of the Dead, so my mission is to play in a cemetery on that day with my band. Um, I've got a series coming out called Refugees, and I forgot to say earlier, an absolutely amazing film uh, that should be coming out soon called Super Bob, and it's like a mockumentary about a crap superhero. <laughs> and the guy that plays it is Brett Goldstein, who's like an incredible stand-up, yeah. and Catherine Tate's in it as well, and it's very funny and it's got great British stuff. So when's that due out? I'm not sure, uh, probably July, June, I don't know. Soon, just watch out for it. <laughs> if, it if it comes over here, we'll see you later. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm loving life <laughs> <laughs> at home. I have a few things maybe coming up very soon, but I'm just loving life. I don't, yeah, seeing these girls here and there and yeah, I, yeah. Do you, do you meet up with each other? Do you see each other often? I haven't seen any of these people for ages. Yeah. That's yeah. what's cool about yeah. conventions, though. Yeah. You get yeah. to see yeah. everyone, because we all have different lives and yeah. live in different yeah. places. And it's, oh, I was just saying, like, seeing everyone, I was actually getting quite upset. I was like, I miss filming. Yeah. Um, I see Georgina and Anna a lot. Every time, like, if they're in Manchester, I come up to London to mm. see the guys. Saw you a few weeks ago tonight. Um, yeah, we keep in contact as much as we can. Thank yeah. God for social media. <laughs> and, um, yeah, yeah, because these are guys live in London and I'm from Manchester, right. so it's like me travelling, but I still make the effort, you know. <laughs> <laughs> these guys don't, but I do, <laughs> but it's fine. I was in Manchester at a while ago. Yeah, I know, I saw you. So. <laughs> um, what I'm curious, what did you guys do on set, sort of between takes to keep yourself busy or entertained when you had to wait around? Anything fun I going on? Then, so I was <laughs> me and David used to go for yeah. a and have a coffee, lots of coffee. You're up from you know six. You just even. eat constantly. Yeah, eat. Someone's always passing you down. Yeah, yeah there's. Always. I literally can't explain that how much food there was. Yeah. I was huge filming it. Like, <laughs> I lost so much weight. Yeah. Yeah. I looked back. I was, like, I was like, so, I was so fat. <laughs> <laughs> I literally was. Um, we had a laugh. I think yeah, we we because we were studying. Well, I was studying anyway. I'm yeah. not sure about you guys. Oh, so so we literally got pulled from set and taken straight into uh, school. Mm -hmm. And like me, Matt, Alfie, and it was great because it was like being in class with like yeah. your best friends, and then we'd all get taken away to set. Um, there is a spoof corridor. music video that we managed to make one oh, day. George, oh, George, where is that? Where is that? Please. I actually, I told her, not. do not where? mention it. <laughs> I don't know where it is. I've got oh, okay. clips of bits that I had on my we camera. We were really bored. Like, we were Someone really else, bored. Like, because there was a day where we were called in, we got ready, and you know, things happen on set, and you know, things get pushed back a little bit. and. So it was like, oh, you're going to be uh, probably by waiting about an hour. So we were just watching, you know, silly things on YouTube and came across this channel where these guys were just doing uh, just spoofs of music videos. Yeah. So and, uh, George and Alfie. Alfie. <laughs> Izzy. And Izzy, yeah. We made a remake of Spandau Ballet's Gold. <laughs> <laughs> but it, we oh, went yeah. all out. Like, yeah. George was out of the window and I was pouring water and it was so like, you know, <laughs> you know, like... <laughs> <laughs> And, and I was, was doing my design field, degree, really? so I edited it all on my Mac and I made like a full on video with credits at the end. And yeah. It was great. Like, we had lighting, Alfie was miming. It was just. We did have like, we had a lamp and we went. We went yeah, all out. We were sort of bouncing the light off with a, a bit of It was a full week project. Yeah. It was, yeah. yeah. Um, we had a lot of things, yeah. yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching.
Hey, you guys! Hey, you guys, huh? Hey, you guys, Is yeah. that from the Goonies? It is indeed, yeah. Nice. Hey!